Okay, chapter 16 is all about heat, okay, conduction, convection, radiation, and we'll talk about Newton's law of cooling and global warming and the greenhouse effect. So to start off, uh, any objects that are in thermal contact and have different temperatures will have heat go from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object. And there's three modes of heat transport. Conduction, for example, the fire is hot, your hand is, uh, is cooler, and so heat will be conducted along this iron uh, rod. There's convection, so actual currents of air can carry heat from the fire to your hands and radiation, which is where electromagnetic waves carry heat from the fire to your hands. So we'll start with conduction. Conduction is the transfer of this internal thermal energy by electron and molecular collisions within a substance, especially in a solid. So the molecules are vibrating a lot in this floor. If your feet touch, then heat will be conducted and into your feet. So good conductors of heat uh, conduct the heat quickly. And it turns out that metals uh, conduct heat uh, better than a lot of other objects. So a copper kettle will conduct heat from the fire into the, into the water. Poor conductors are called insulators. These are substances in which the electrons don't move freely. And so good insulators include glass, wool, wood, paper, cork, this uh, styrofoam cup. If you touch it, it, it has the heat going very slowly from the coffee out into your hand. So insulation uh, doesn't prevent the flow of this internal thermal energy. It just slows the rate at which internal energy flows. For example, this pink uh, fiberglass insulation in the walls will reduce the rate that heat flows from the higher temperature side to the lower temperature side. Convection is the transfer of heat involving the bulk motion of fluids. For example, in this room you might be able to see a visible shimmer of air above the radiator, and that's actually the air moving and carrying heat around. You can also sometimes see visible shimmers of uh, heat currents in water, for example on this pot or above uh, this heating element. The reason for convection is that the warmer fluid expands, becomes less dense, and is buoyed upwards. And it rises until its density equals that of the surrounding fluid, and then it will fall again when it gets more dense. This can cause winds. So when the sun heats uh, the ground, the temperature of the land rises faster than the temperature of the water because of the higher specific heat capacity of the water. So what that can do is it can create a higher temperature, less dense air over the land, which will rise up until it cools, and then it will drop over the water, and this is called an offshore breeze. Uh, at night, the ground will cool faster than the water, again, because of the high specific heat, heat capacity of water, and then the air will be cooler over the land and fall. It'll raise to a higher temperature over uh, the water and be buoyed upwards and create an onshore breeze. And lastly, radiation is the transfer of energy via electromagnetic waves, such as uh, light, wave, radio waves, infrared waves, or light waves. So. Uh, radiation or electromagnetic waves are waves in the electric and magnetic fields and they exist as long as radio waves, okay, longer wavelength waves, uh, all the way down to visible light. If you go shorter and shorter it gets down to gamma rays. But these are all the same thing, just waves in the electric and magnetic fields. And it turns out that the wavelength is related to the frequency. Uh, longer wavelength light, like this red light, has lower frequency, whereas blue light has a shorter wavelength and higher frequency. So every object, it turns out, will emit radiation if it's got some temperature. If it's a very high temperature, like the sun, it emits visible light, and if it's 
uh, temperature like objects here on Earth, it'll emit infrared light. So when we look at somebody with our eyes, we're always seeing reflected uh, visible light. But if our eyes were somehow sensitive to infrared, then we could turn off all the lights and we would see uh, objects with uh, higher temperature glowing in the infrared. So it turns out that as you raise the temperature of something, the peak frequency of the emitted light gets higher and higher, okay, higher frequency. So moving towards the blue. And here actually is visible light. So all of these objects are emitting mostly in the infrared. But as you increase the temperature to thousands of degrees, you see more and more visible light. So a room temperature object emits just mostly in the infrared. If you go above about 500 degrees Celsius, uh, something will start to glow red. At about 600 degrees Celsius, you start to see it glow more yellow. And if you really increase the temperature to about 1500 degrees, it starts to look white hot. So any material that absorbs more than it emits is a net absorber. If it emits more than it absorbs, it's a net emitter. And this net absorption or emission uh, depends on the relative temperature of the object to its surroundings. Okay? If this stove is hotter than its surroundings, then it'll be a net emitter. If, the, if it's cold and the room is warm, it'll actually absorb. And that's why it looks black. And it turns out that anything that is black like this, a good absorber, is also a good emitter of uh, electromagnetic waves. And poor absorbers are poor emitters. So any surface that reflects very little or no radiant energy looks dark, like eye pupils, open ends of pipes in a stack, open doorways. Okay, The light goes in, but it doesn't come out very easily, and it can look dark. Good reflectors are poor absorbers. And poor absorbers are also poor emitters. So it turns out that a white container uh, does not emit as much electromagnetic radiation as a dark container. So if you take these two uh, containers and fill them up with a very hot fluid, then the dark one will cool down faster than this more reflective one. Newton's law of cooling is that the rate of cooling is proportional to the difference in temperature between the two objects. The coffee is hot, your hands are, are cooler, and so there's a temperature difference. The greater the temperature difference, the greater the rate of heat flowing between your, the coffee and your hands. Also applies to the rate of warming. So uh, a warmer house, if you crank up the heat in your house, it leaks more energy to the surroundings than if you have it uh, less warm. Also frozen food, will warm up faster in a warm room than if it's in a uh, cold room. And lastly, I want to talk about the greenhouse effect. So in an actual greenhouse where you keep flowers, short wavelength radiation from the sun is transmitted through the glass. Then it's absorbed by the flowers and it's re-emitted uh, as infrared. And it turns out that glass does not transmit infrared. It just reflects it back in. And that's why a greenhouse will warm up. So there's also greenhouse gases. So the air we breathe is mostly nitrogen and, and, and oxygen, which is transparent to both visible and infrared light. But certain gases are transparent for visible light, we can see through them, but they are absorbing for infrared radiation. And these are called greenhouse gases because they ask, act a little bit like the glass of a greenhouse. Examples include carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, and nitrous oxide. Uh, a lot of these are produced by, by the exhaust of cars, so pollution uh, is a form of greenhouse gases. So here on Earth, what happens is energy is, is absorbed as visible light from the sun, and then it's partly re-radiated by the Earth as infrared radiation. And some of this tra uh, terrestrial radiation is absorbed by the atmospheric greenhouse gases, and then re-emitted back to Earth. And so the equilibrium temperature of the Earth is determined by how much greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. More greenhouse gases means the temperature of the Earth has to be higher in order to make the power uh, balance uh, coming in from the sun and going out from the Earth. And so as 
human activity has been, over the past couple of hundred years, has been steadily raising the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere, this will actually con contribute to global warming. So here's a nice little graph, uh, including some uh, direct measurements of the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, in, in historical times, it has hovered around 250 parts per million by volume. Uh, this is up to the past uh, last couple of thousands of years. Over the past couple of centuries, it's gone up by about 50% and is now somewhere about 380 parts uh, per million by volume.